Okay, so we are going to do an award. This is our first time ever doing this, but, you know, because COVID-19 caused a lot of pivots this year. A lot of physical events were canceled. Uh, so there was a lot of online presentations. Uh, so this is going to be the best online presentation of 2020. This is like companies having events, right? So Apple had a few keynotes this year. NVIDIA had their reveal of the GPU lineup, the RTX line. Um, Sony and Xbox both revealed their consoles this year with digital events. Jeff Keighley had a whole summer of doing his job. Um, so yeah, this is an award for the folks uh, who, uh, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the work that happened behind the scenes. You know, there's, there's people cutting together trailers, helping the live stream production go on. Uh, this is an award for those folks uh, and, and for the entities themselves. But best online presentation of 2020. Anyone want to get kick this off? Yeah, I'll kick it off. Um, I Chris is a god in my eyes when it comes to tech and technology. I think he's a really tough critic for, with a lot of things, and rightfully so. Watching him react, and you, Asif, to the NVIDIA live stream and being so impressed by everything he showed and like just the casual nature of that live stream made it so amazing to watch. Mainly it was Chris's reaction to everything because he was like, this is amazing. And to hear that spatula. come out of his smooth, buttery voice, like him being so excited because he's usually <laughs> so critical, is definitely worth a, a high, high regard in my opinion. Yeah. Just a great uh, showcase overall. I mean, the hiding the 3080 behind some spatulas was just, I mean, just, just a baller move. Just a question for everyone here. How many spatulas do you own? Uh, <laughs> one, two, 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 one, three or four, maybe. Right? Uh, that yeah. dude's got like 40 spatulas. I, I think that makes this even that moment so much sweeter. You guys, both yeah. of you, pointed out the spatulas. You both go, he has a lot of spatulas. And it was a, it was a ploy to hide the 38. He was sitting there. You can go back to the beginning of that presentation and half the damn card is sticking out next to the spatulas. Yeah. <laughs> But, but that's the taken. that's how that's why it's so amazing though is the misdirection that's like magic yeah. yeah like the card had from the minute he was on screen the card was revealed like it yeah. was sitting there it's it's literally it's, sitting there it's some planet and of we the were apes looking shit. at it and discussing something <laughs> an inch from it and didn't see it that is yeah awesome that was I, I love I love when they have fun with those presentations and do silly stuff like that. Like uh, Phil Spencer with the like Series S on his shelf on a video back in like August before that console was ever revealed. Just mm -hmm. Easter eggs. And I, I think it's charming to see Jensen shoot. You know, Jensen Wong, CEO of Nvidia, shoot the the direct or you know, whatever you call it, the presentation in his kitchen. You mm -hmm. know, like uh, it, contrast that with Apple being up their own ass, like. Oh, this this headquarters is a great set piece. We're gonna use drone cameras, and Tim Cook's gonna be all alone in a cafeteria. It's gonna look great. It's well, just like when Tim where there's no bathroom, the and we built this house yeah. and then okay. cut it in half, and now there's no bathroom. I, and they yeah. can't leave until you buy our products. Yeah, I hope but, like, that someone you can trust those yeah. two tech giants, right? Jensen yeah. is a founder, an engineer. He's brilliant. He's charismatic. He did a great job of presenting the product and he's super knowledgeable about the product. Whereas Apple's just kind of fumbling over themselves. Uh, and they they took three presentations to do what normally would have taken one last year. Uh, but I think NVIDIA deserves a lot of credit for what they did this year. Absolutely. It's important too though, right? Like having that presentation in your kitchen, it may not seem important, but given that it's 2020 that's sending a message like that's yeah. somebody who's like taking seriously that i shouldn't be going into this giant office like i'm in my kitchen like all of you and yeah it sucks but this is what we have and we're gonna make like that i appreciate that sure like and apple apple at the end of their events they always say these were shot safely right they like they took all the precautions and everything but to jensen's point you didn't have to take those precautions you probably only needed like one camera person who can do audio too to come to his house. Whereas Apple's presentation still involved a lot of production value. Yeah, it did. And everything. like, not only that, but like Jensen, like as a CEO, like he, he likes what he's doing. I'm not saying other CEOs don't, but just, he seems more like he's more laid back, more realistic. He was like giggling when he like said, well, let's see what's in the oven. Like he knew it was corny and he was having fun with it, showing this thing that he's been working on for years where a lot of other 
companies, it feels like a guy reading a script. He's only there because he's the face of the company. That's the only reason he's there. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that was one hundred percent for sure. His kitchen. Yeah. Everyone in the Apple presentations, by contrast, sounds like they're reading a script that has in parentheses "be enthusiastic here." They, they sound wow. like they're taking that was a impressive, ridiculous wasn't it? amount Literally. of training. <laughs> like they've been trained real. Like they've, there's been a lot of training behind this. The app, right? only person at the Apple event that I'll give credit to for being genuinely enthusiastic is Craig Figueredi, Craig Federighi, uh, the, the, guy, the guy that head of software. Oh. The guy who was it up to... very longingly at the mic that the MacBook Air when he opened it up, but yeah, like I think Craig <laughs> is a good example, of someone who doesn't feel stilted in his presentations, and he is genuinely excited and he cares about the software that he's working on. He's, I, I think he's probably one of the best people they have at that company right now. Uh, it became noticeable that like it, Apple's losing its its team, that that bench, the people that released the iPhone. It's like that picture in Back to the Future that's slowly dissipating. Uh, <laughs> like Johnny Ive is gone. He's now an Apple fellow. P- Phil Schiller, gone. He's now an Apple fellow. Uh, Eddie Q, who is kind of spearheading their Apple TV Plus eff- efforts, he wasn't anywhere to be seen in all three of those presentations. Uh, Tony Fidel went to make Nest. He's no longer at Apple. He's the godfather of the iPod. Scott Forstall basically quit uh but he was fired essentially after apple maps uh, he was pissed off that he wasn't picked the ceo to begin with so who's left and then like also it's also him. to your point they're also like promoting people in the company that have no business being promoted there was a guy who took the timeline out of iMovie and they put him randy or your or whatever like yeah. that was his decision and they promoted him to the new final cut which was arguably a disaster like well, they keep promoting the wrong people yeah so i just i feel like those that presentation the most recent one where Tim Cook's led off with one more thing and he's standing in an empty cafeteria. I don't think they know what they're doing over there anymore. And those presentations kind of showcase that. Whereas I feel like Jensen knows exactly what he's doing. And yeah. he had us, you know, uh, I would say that Marbles at Night was probably the best demo I've seen all year of yeah, anything. That was. That was like actually something I would like to play. Like if if Blake came at me and was like, "Here's a puzzle game. Have it out, but have a review by Friday." I'd be like, "Hell yeah, this looks dope." I would yeah. like actually play the heck out of that tech demo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, I think one thing we can't default is just how superb Revolver Digital is at making keynotes enjoyable. Like you're talking about like a. CEO having fun hiding his graphics card around his kitchen. I mean, uh, the, the, this, they take it to a whole other level. Like, I mean, with Devolver Land, they literally did. They, I, I feel like Devolver for years has been thumbing their nose at E3 from across the street. Oh, yeah. And this, this year, was the, the year that they finally swept the leg. And they're like, boom, here's Devolver Land. Deal yeah. with it. And that's something that like you hint at, but like, so let's go into that. Devolver presentations are sequels to the previous Devolver presentation. There is a narrative in Devolver presentations that they keep going with each time they do one. It's not like you want to talk about scripted, but it actually works. Devolver can like, yes, they're there to show you their games and, and let you like fawn over the new products that they're coming out with. But in between, they, like, just do this silly-ass thing where it's, like, an ongoing narrative of a schlocky action movie that has no place but works so well. I like the part of this most recent Devolver E3 presentation where they were, like, they just started announcing games that didn't exist. And they're, like, Mm -hmm. and now to Bennett Foddy. And he's, like, I guess I'm making a game. (laughs) Like, I loved... The campiness of that, I I agree. Uh, it was it was really well done, um, but I I think that they didn't have a whole lot this year because like so much of what they announced at the Devolver Direct was fake. It was like, yeah, like it was almost four. too much of a joke for me this year. They had like three or four actual games that they like talked about. That yeah. Were- 
real projects. I felt like the Devolver Land announcement made up for that. <laughs> yeah, they said, they yeah, said, oh, we made this thing, and it's by Flying Wild Hog. Oh, and you can play it right now. Yeah. And it's free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's literally the Los Angeles Convention Center. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, that's the final sweep the leg moment for them. Like, mm-hmm. th- it's this year, you have to remember, like, this the whole COVID-19 pandemic started with Devolver tweeting out, I would cancel your E3 hotels and flights oh, yeah. if I were you. And that they was like that. two days before E3 canceled the event. Speaking of the quality of the games at the Devolver show, I would rather be wildly entertained with fake games than have to sit through <laughs> a show where they keep giving me more games about Falcons that are real that I don't care about. <laughs> are you talking about Xbox here? Just oh, everybody that announced a Falcon or flying Falcon based or shooting from a Falcon based game. Besides, Falcons <laughs> peaked with Falcon Age last year. Mm-hmm. We already have Falcon Age. Like, Falcon here didn't need to come out. And whatever that game was where you rode on the back of a different falcon and jumped from things. I don't know. I'm just I'm just tired of real games. You don't so even you, have like, you you even have like have Captain a... Falcon games anymore. Oh, shut up. How <laughs> dare you. Um, Shakes Fist at Ozzy. Every I... fake game that Devolver showed was way cooler than every real game that launched on Xbox Series X. Mm-hmm. That's not It's wrong. actually kind of funny when that happens, right? Like, they did that with, um, when they were, wasn't it with the, um, with Unreal, where they were showcasing a thing that's not a game, and everyone's like, uh, you need to make that game. Uh, Unreal's really known for that, though. When they showed off Unreal Engine 5, and they're like, here's this demo yeah. of this thing, and everyone's that's like, holy crap, about, yeah. I want to play that. Yeah, they've yeah. done that before. Um, I think Robo Recall started that way. Robo Recall was kind of a proof of concept uh, VR tech demo for UE4. Uh, so maybe there'll be a game born out of that. But it's just funny that if Devolver's not careful, like what Crab says, like they're going to announce a fake game and people are going to be like, uh, wait a minute, you need to make that. Like, mm-hmm. That's got to happen. I mean, they might end up making that because they're pretty maybe. cool. But yeah, I think yeah. like having, putting out a video game and making a virtual convention out of it was super brilliant nobody really did that and the lightheartedness of it yeah i just i don't know like the only person trying to really keep things like a little more casual in that sense was some of the stuff jeff Keeley did with like miss piggy and alf but this that stuff is just it it lacks the sincerity of the devolver stuff i feel like yeah. it's just like it's just like it's just like jeff Keeley wanting to show off that not only is he BFFs with Kojima, but like he also knows Alpha and Miss Piggy. You know, la di da. I Bach mean, Avenue. we all get to see, you know, on December 10th, we get to see a whole list of people Jeff Keighley knows. And that's going to be, it's going to be wanna... a really, really impressive list of famous people that Jeff Keighley gets to talk about video games. You want to talk about a person that like, doesn't feel like he's flaunting his connections at you every time you see him like that's genuinely sincere and just fun to listen to i want to talk about the smash directs Mm -hmm. i want to talk about mr sakurai presents i want Mm -hmm. to talk about min min it's ramen shop kirby those Mm -hmm. animations are always so good the way they introduce those characters is always so good and then you just get an hour of Masahiro Sakurai just chilling in his house, presenting the game to you, and just like playing the game himself. What? Uh-huh. What? Uh, there's nothing. With two controllers. <laughs> like the fact that he's sitting there with two pro controllers, one-handed on both of them, <laughs> and showing you how the gameplay works. I was like, damn. The dude's got two TVs set up. Like I just. Oh man. Yeah, I'll if go you... out on a limb and say that Jensen got his idea for pulling the graphics card out from behind the spatulas <laughs> Sakurai he did... hiding amiibos behind his house plants. He was doing that. I mean, <laughs> if you if you want to talk about if you want to talk about like I guess presentation hosts that are like beloved or beloved by their community, nobody passes uh, Masahiro Sakurai. I mean, the way that like the Smash community clings to him. It's like a guiding light. Is... Yeah, but the Smash community also shits on him a lot. Which I he also know. like lovingly trolls them. Yeah, like, true. I but... think was it this year that he was, that he was like, Smash is a fighting game. Is it though? He said it's a celebration <laughs> of yeah. gaming. 
It is. And then, like, yeah, also, it's, it's the numbers. same weekend that Nintendo canceled a, a Splatoon 2 live stream, he posted a screenshot of the Splatoon character in Smash. Like, he is trolling. No question about it. Uh, but I, I still think when it comes to showcasing new gameplay mechanics and new characters, he does it with such a reverence that it's like... He, he's so fun to listen to when he talks about the characters and then he'll go into like the backstory of how the characters came in. It's just so fascinating. He's a gaming like a historian. These... Like he'll he sit there and talk about uh, Terry Bogard for like 15 minutes. <laughs> you know? And like, you're like, oh my god, this guy really cares about Terry Bogard. Like, he talked about of... Minecraft. Minecraft, it's not even their property. <laughs> yeah, like he'll see it. And he goes through there and he talks about every little detail that they had to add he to the actually, game. He actually has like the play Minecraft sword pickaxes, like talking about how Minecraft mechanic works. I love, it's I love how... <laughs> I love how nonchalant he is about like everything he says too, like talking about the Minecraft thing where he's like, oh yeah, and by the way, we had to rework every single map in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate to include Steve in the new update, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah. And just casually throwing that in like, we yeah, had to rework a... every single stage from the ground up. Like that's, oh yeah, you're presenting that as a minor detail. Yeah, minor detail. Yeah. Also, I think he... every single, I think every single Smash Direct has presented at least two to four memeable moments with specifically focused on Sakurai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good good boys and girls. <laughs> but, oh, that's right! <laughs> Smash Brothers Sometimes. is for good boys and girls. I wonder if I'll ever get to sleep. <laughs> yeah. He has... Yeah, or it's... Uh, even this most recent one, he, it's so lonely. Remember that? Yeah. I, like he's just. You felt kind of bad for him after a while. Yeah, like he's sitting alone in his living room doing the stream, and I'm like, oh man, I feel he's like liter- Sakurai. He's literally locked in his house with Smash. It's all his, it's all his kept in company for the last nine months. Also, when he was talking about Steve in Minecraft, he didn't want to do it. He's like, Nintendo came to me and said, <laughs> can you do this? And he was like, really? I guess. Yeah, he was like, I'm not sure, whatever. Yeah, they're like, oh, well, <laughs> I suppose I'll have to add Steve now. He's just like, one of these guys Whoa. has been working on this poor, he, this poor man. We'll wants only to- have to rebuild the stages from the ground up, but we can do it. Yeah, he's like, I guess I can. But uh, yeah, I, I found that, especially the ramen presentation, I found to be super charming. Like, Obviously, two of my favorite Nintendo characters ever hanging out, eating ramen together. And the amount of memes that F-Zero Twitter has been able to cobble out of just that one scene <laughs> is really worth it. Yeah. yeah. Like, some people miss a step or, like, feel, you, like, feel it in the production value when it, ta- when it comes to the pivot between, like, regular business as normal and, like, online only work from home type thing. You didn't feel like... You know, I never felt like that with Sakurai's presentations. I I felt like it changed a little bit, but it was like the same level of quality that I had come to expect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just he's just kind of uh, I don't know. He's he's like the only digital presenter that makes his presentations. Like any of these other presentations, more or less, you can interchange the uh, the hosts, and they don't really get any better or worse. But like when the day inevitably comes that there's a Smash Direct and it's somebody not Sakurai hosting it, it's going to be really, really, really weird. Yeah, it's like the first Nintendo Direct after Iwata passed away. Like It was like yeah. very different. You could argue that they haven't been the same since. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think, you're, I think you're dead right there. Uh, I think Nina Struthers, uh, going back to Devolver, I think she's similar in that sense. Like yeah. if, they did, if they do one without Nina, it's not going to be as good um, mm-hmm. because she's such an iconic character at this point. Um, but yeah, I think we've, we've talked enough about Mr. Sakurai Presents, but yeah, both those Smash Directs were delightful. Um, let's see, what else do we got in here? Xbox did a couple of these. They did. They, they sure did, have, did. I forgot what oh, they even oh called boy. Uh, they I forgot what they even showed off. They Inside. showed, off, they showed off Halo and then they laid it. Oh, they did yeah. show us Halo Infinite. They showed off a bunch of... Yeah, they teased us. With it didn't that, look very good, which I think, is probably why they delayed it. I think Chris and I were doing a reaction stream with you, Blake, uh, for it. But yeah. the one thing yeah. that I kept asking Chris about in real time was, is this actual gameplay? And nine times out of ten, it was no. It was just pre-rendered things. So it's like, 
we got a lot of announcements from Xbox, but we didn't get much gameplay. Yeah, like next year's shaping up to be pretty good. Maybe 2022 might even be better. Like, mm-hmm. but like not seeing anything but that teaser trailer for Fable really. I mean, we got I, Everwild's, tr- uh, you know, that was shown off, and that looked kind of cool. That looked cool, and we actually saw a gameplay of that too. But yeah, yeah, for the most part, everything was just like a CGI trailer, and coming soon. It was basically just like sitting in a movie theater waiting for the movie to begin, and then all you got was the trailers and no movie. So contrast that with PS Five. Which drops the banger of the century, the Bug Snacks song. Right? <laughs> it it didn't matter good. after that. It was. That was the win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Bug Snacks. Game, game showcase was all killer, no filler. But yeah, there was a lot of. Uh, I mean, Demon Souls remake was a big announcement at that event, too. Like, mm-hmm. there were some big. They started off with Miles Morales. Yeah, to kick off with Miles Morales. To have a Final Fantasy 16 announcement in there, mm-hmm. uh, I'd say they, they, they really screwed up was a couple of times when they said that these games were coming to PC also. Like, you can't let that slip when you're making yeah. a presentation like that. I don't know how that happened. but And also failing to mention that the games that you were showing off would actually be launch games like yeah. Demon's Souls. <laughs> yeah, no release dates mentioned for anything. And then having weird. Keely do it 18 yeah. minutes later on Twitter nonchalantly. Yeah. Uh, well, he is the god emperor of video games, so... Well, it, that's it, what you pay Jeff Keighley for, to, you know, tweet release dates. I guess. Um, I should have tweeted... I should have paid him to tweet about Cortex. My bad. Yeah, you should have. Oh, well. I would pay Warrior really 64 before I pay Jeff Keighley at this point. How much do you think a promoted tweet from Jeff Keighley costs, Greg? $25,000. No oh, way. Oh, man. That's... No. That's a mid-sized sedan. $5,000. We, we can, we, we can ask, uh, ask his agent. Can get, get a quote. Machine. A dollar! We should have a bidding site for Jeff Keeley promoted <laughs> tweets. You know, it's it's funny because you say that's that's a lot of money, but Kevin Hart charges that much for a wee tweet. Kevin Hart, would, Kevin Hart. At this point, I would literally like pay Wario sixty four, Juge EX, or Nabillion to uh, leak my uh, my business right. before I pay Jeff <laughs> Keeley. I don't know. Yeah. Jeff Keeley's got more followers than Wario sixty four. Charges. I guarantee he charges. I promise you, he does. I know he charges, but I'm just saying he, he probably doesn't charge twenty five thousand a tweet. That's high. We can find out. I can email his agent and ask. <laughs> they will give me a quote. Oh, forget his agent. I'll just email. I'll email him directly. No, he won't. He won't respond. I'll forward you to his business manager. No, he won't. He replies to me. You don't know Jeff like I do. <laughs> I clearly <laughs> don't. I'm not allowed on the bus, Asif. Well, there wasn't any room. There wasn't any room, Greg. <laughs> We'll never let that down. Uh, yeah. So anyway, neither the PS5 or the Xbox Series X were the presentation of the year for me. Uh, the PS5, I thought, was better of a reveal, but because of the things we were talking about, like Christmas... Yeah, they had cool games, but we don't, just don't know when they're coming. They're horrible at d- conveying information, uh, which when you're writing a bunch of articles as the news is breaking, was very frustrating. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't say that either of them really did that great. Um... There was that presentation earlier in the year at what would have been GDC where Mark Cerny came out and just waxed poetic about SSDs for 40 minutes. <laughs> I loved that. I Just give me Mark Cerny talking about stuff all day. That I thought that was delightful. Boring as hell. <laughs> oh, you're never coming to GDC. That's rough. No one's ever going to. I was, I was thinking in my head, I was like, who is going to GDC next year? It's not uh, happening. There is no GDC. <laughs> GDC, a great you know, place you, to you, see. Yes, GDC physical was canceled, but then there were two digital GDCs this year. Including yeah. one the same week as Gamescom. Which, which didn't make any awesome. sense. <laughs> but yeah, they're like, I don't know, we'll just do two GDCs. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, cut I one head off, two more replace it. Next year we'll have four GDCs. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, there there are some rival GDCs that are forming because uh, the pricing is really absurd for developers. Um, do we have any other nominations? I'm gonna yeah, give an sh- honorable mention mm-hmm. to the Shack News Direct. I thought it was pretty great, but I'm biased. 
Nice. It is pretty great that you got, what was it, the founder? Yeah, we got Martin Goldstein to give us a shout out. And actually, he tried out Cortex while it was on the dev environment and was like, whoa, this Carter's report's cool. Like, it was just, it was neat to have a back and forth with them before we did the, the presentation. And yeah, if you were watching our stream, the stream just goes nuts when he came on camera. <laughs> like, it was, it was great. There was a lot of good end jokes in that whole thing. Oh, really that whole thing it. was like, and we're going to do another one, but that one was like, I said it at the very beginning. These are videos designed for shackers, you know, like it's not going to be something that we're like, this is a broad marketing tool. It's we're talking directly to our community when we mm -hmm. make one of those videos. So I thought in that respect, we did a great job at that. We love seeing really... our own guys in our on our streams. That's why people go nuts whenever they see Steve Gibson on a Jeff Keighley award show. Mm -hmm. They're like, Steve, you, you, you made it, man. Yeah. No, I tried to get Steve. I, Steve, is, Steve is a busy man. He is a busy man. He's got kids and, you know, he's... He was, he was trying to get Godfall out. He, yeah, he was literally launching Godfall and uh, Borderlands 3 on Next Gen the week of our Direct. Because, yeah, the Direct aired on December 9th and the Next Gen consoles were coming out that week and stuff. But, uh, no, we appreciate both those guys, like, supporting us all this time. Uh, but, yeah, it's... It was cool to have Martin be there for the direct. I thought that was a big win for us. But yeah, that that chat was some of the most. It was the most active I've seen our Twitch chat in a long time, yeah. uh, which was cool. Uh, but yeah, I just want to give a shout out and shout out to Greg again for the miraculous editing job that he did there, because that was the time least amount of friend. least amount of lead time I've ever given you for a video. <laughs> Technical hiccups. Yeah, it was, everything was there. That was fun. Well done, you. Uh, so yeah, let's let's vote. What do you say? Let's vote. Um, I'm sticking with revolver. revolver. I, I, devolver. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Like it just encompasses. I mean, I, I like the Nintendo Directs a lot because I think they also encompass the idea that like this is video games. It should be fun. We don't have to be all like stiff shirt and businessy mm -hmm. you know so uh yeah that's my that's my choice devolver okay uh nvidia for the reasons i said earlier like chris is to get, to get chris excited is no easy task and he was really excited so <laughs> spatula for greg I uh, I stand by uh, Mr. Sakurai. I actually do believe that Jensen may have gotten the idea for the spatula idea from uh, Sakurai's <laughs> Amiibo thing. Plus, the Smash Directs are just so damn good every single time. They just, uh, like, at conveying information, they're amazing. Like, the amount of information you get from a, sh uh, a Smash Direct is always really damn impressive. It's a history lesson, a technical lesson, and entertainment all in yep. one. Yep, yep. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go spatulas because of everything that I've watched this year in terms of uh, presentation. That's what I remember, and it's I remember all of our reactions and how we freaked out. And I don't remember that happening at any other point this year. So also, just the year cool. over, or I guess generation over generation performance uh, jumps that they had in their whole RTX line was really damn impressive. So yeah. like those slides, like Greg, you're talking about hearing Chris and I go off. It wasn't necessarily the reveal behind the spatula that got us. It was that, it was wait, everything this time. we're getting what? That much more performance for less? You know, yeah. like, it, that was the holy shit moment for me, at least. I, I'm not speaking for Chris, but yeah, like, I think that was why I, 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 I'm I voting for uh, the spatula direct. And I, I would suggest to our audience, go back and watch our best hardware because of all the reasons we talked about, like the RTX line in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I went into this thinking it was going to be Devolver easy for me. But I think about it, I think I liked... It, pro it probably wasn't my favorite uh, direct from them. I think I liked their loot box coin direct the most. I think I'm going to go with uh, NVIDIA as well. Um, it was just a great conveying of information. It was very impressive what they showed. I think the only thing that soured NVIDIA's uh, conference was the absolute shit show that trying to get any of those products turned into. But um, I'm not going to... can't hold it against the presentation. Yeah, I'm not gonna let that team up, but I, it's, I'm still going uh, Nvidia for it. Donovan's on Team Spatula. Yeah, Spatula's pretty good. And don't forget the oven too. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one more thing in the oven. <laughs> and he's like, oof. Like, when he picks it up, he's like, oof, it's a meaty boy. <laughs> At 3090. Uh, Josh. I just, I love the big <laughs> transitions and shit like that that come with with the uh, events like Apple put on with their digital events. But there's just something about the down to earth, like just chilling in this kitchen presentation uh, from Jensen and NVIDIA that just, uh, yeah, I can't, like there's there's no other choice for me in this, in this uh, category. Team Spatula all the way. Steve. I'm going with Smash Brothers. Mr. Sakurai presents. Yeah, Mr. Sakurai. Nice. Ozzy. I am also going to say Mr. Sakurai presents uh, such, such a one, such a wonderful little video game history, and the Minecraft one in particular was such a such a soothing little lead-in to uh, the bigger Minecon uh, Minecon direct that they were that they were doing over at Minecraft. So, yeah, I'll put that. Nice. Sakurai isn't afraid to kill Mario, and I love him for that. Or Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> or anybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris. We go with Devolver. Interesting. Oh. Sam's not here to vote. Uh, let's see what we got here. I guess I feel like. Oh, I sure didn't like that Devolver. Oh, Even if Sam voted for Devolver, we have more spatula votes. That's fair. Five think... spatula votes. Spatula City. That's I what I was think thinking Sam... the whole time. I'm going to cover with the UHF Spatula City commercial. <laughs> Well, anyway, congratulations to NVIDIA and Jensen Wong and all 40 of his spatulas. You have won the first ever Shaq News Award for Best Online Presentation of 2020. It seems like we might have to keep this category around. So, Definitely. <laughs> At least for the next yeah, half a year talk. or so. Yeah, I'm sure everything's going to get back to normal. Wait a second, where is he hiding the 3090? It's somewhere in that scene. It's going to be in the oven. What if it's behind his zipper? I need a raise today. $699? Oh god, I need a raise today. Faster than the 2080 Ti for $500. $500. $500. Ladies and gentlemen, the new GeForce RTX 3070. Jensen, you son of a... Jensen, you b- it's a it was there the whole time! Please.